This is God going before you. This is you knowing that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Y'all get this? Now, what we don't want is we don't want those on your team. Y'all turn around and come get me. See, you don't want that to happen. Peace out, peace out, peace out. <laughs> God says, I will bring you a team. I will build strength around you. He can't, you, you say, mm, don't say nothing. Mm, what? what? Because when you know you're covered, you got confidence. Can I get a witness in here? God, I thank you. I'm still alive. God, say it. I thank you. Say it. I thank you that I'm still alive. Say it. I thank you that I'm still alive. Let somebody laugh at you, but they're laughing because you're alive. Reset. Everybody, come on, let's put our hands together. This is the inspiring body of Christ Church. I want to thank you this morning for being with us. To all of you that are online, we are virtual this morning, but we have a few saints that have come in the house this morning because everything is opening up and the house of God has never been closed. Now, I need you to do something. I need you to make sure that I know, that you know, that we know, that we all know that we are in the right services. Now, don't look like that. You already had something. You didn't have donuts, but you had something for breakfast this morning. So we are grateful to God for you. This morning, we're going to start our praise with the IBOC, Living Sound and Praise Dancers. Very special service this morning. Let's go. Everybody say, I can't stop praising his name. You know the song. Yeah, from this point on, everything goes up. Yeah, that's it. You can clap, you can put your hands together, you can rock, or you can just sit down and wave from side to side. Thank you. 
see you have a praise on your own. You can get involved with this praise song right now. Everybody sing King Stop. Uh, we're just grateful to God. How many of you know God won't fail you? I know you know God won't fail you. Amen. Brother, Brother Bomar.
Somebody doing all this. We're not doing all that. We, y'all just breaking it down. And, and who told you to get a partner over there? What y'all, what y'all doing? Let's get it together. One, two, three. And he won't fail. He won't fail. That's it. We're just having a good time this morning. We're just having a good time this morning. That's it. Say it. He won't fail you. Brother Trent Bomber, thank you for taking us there. He won't fail you. He won't fail you. Say it. He won't fail you. He won't fail you. He won't fail you. Can we take it one more time? Bro? Can we take it one more time? Can we take it one more time? This is the best. Here we go. Hallelujah. Somebody say this. Ah! <laughs> Stop. Don't play. Okay. Repeat after me. Say this. I have made it back to church. Hey, back to church. Say it. I have made it. I have made it back to church. Say back to church. I'm back to church. I'm back at 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 church. Turn to somebody and say it to me. 
you have made it. Say, back to church. Now, come on, tell somebody else on the other side. Say, you have made it. Back to church. Now, let's have that back to church music. Hey. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So at this time, I think we're about, um, let me see, that's rain. What do we want to do right now? Can we do another song? You want to do another song? I mean, you're sitting there like, is he just winging it? Yeah, man, we're just grateful to God to be here today. I'm not trying to hurry up and get out of church right now. Amen. I just, we're going to be out real quick. Amen. Okay. <laughs> no, Really? Really? No, we have not sat sickness in over a year or two. <laughs> Lord, are you? Y'all remember this little song? I cannot believe we're doing this. Shout out to the Lord. Why your blessing, Lord? Y'all remember this song? Even me, Lord. Let some drops fall on me. Y'all got to help us sing this now. Y'all got to help us sing this, okay? Just a little bit. Rain on me. Rain on me. Shine on me. He goes. Holy Ghost. Fall down on me. Rain on me. Shine on me. Holy Ghost. outside Lord but let the Holy Ghost fall down
to speak for you so with grace won't do perch and clean breathe into me and like a masterful musician play an instrument you can play through so good or so kind but because of your amazing grace well this prayer right now is being offered over this word because you have something to say to us and we pray in the name of Jesus that every spirit that's dwelling anywhere near any of us that are listening someone's hearts troubled right now someone's minds confused <clears throat> Someone's deciding, Lord, I just don't know if I can go on anymore. Say something today, God, to help us to understand and realize that you're right with us. Make a personal word, Lord. One, one sentence, if you just have to. One statement that someone knows. No one knew that I was in that state but you, God. Thank you for putting me in the right place. Say something, God. Speak to us. Speak to us. Speak to us. Through your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know what you had to go through to get to service this morning. I don't know what kind of Wi-Fi issues you may have during the message. I don't care. I don't know what it is you're going to have to do to stay tuned. But I'm going to ask you this morning to not let anything distract you. There's a temptation when you're watching service online. There's a temptation when people are in service to sometimes look at an electronic device and 
of other things that could distract us, and I understand that. I have recently become very fond of watching videos that have nothing to do with me. I'm just minding my own business, and somebody will send me something. And I'll end up watching one thing, and it flips over to something else. And sometimes they're very funny. Sometimes they're humorous. Sometimes they're sad. Sometimes they're informative. <clears throat> but it's amazing how 99% of all of them I don't ask for. They just come across where I am. And I have to use wisdom, and I have to use knowledge to decide which ones I'm going to cut off. Sometimes there are familiar songs that come right behind the video that warn you that something goofy is getting ready to happen. In any case, for a long time now, we have been getting used to being entertained without having people around. Some people that come to church have goals. Some have dreams. A lot of times we don't know the difference. A goal is something... A lot of people say they have dreams, and really, in reality, you don't have dreams. You just have goals. A goal is something you can accomplish on your own. Dreams, God sends people to you to make sure that you understand that that's going to come through him. I'll say that again because God didn't get any amens on that one. A goal is something you can accomplish on your own. A lot of people say, well, my dreams didn't come true. No, 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 no. That may have been a goal. And when there's a goal, sometimes you can get weakened, you can get discouraged, something can happen, people can walk away from your life, things can go on, people can influence you to, to stop accomplishing or looking toward that. But that dream, God will give to you in a crisis sometimes. Sometimes it takes a crisis for God to say, now, I need somebody to just learn from what just happened. I'm thinking I'm talking to some dreamers in here this morning. Something happened in your life, and after it happened, you said, wait a minute, I've got to be the one to stand up for this right here. I found myself on the other end now. I've been watching the last few weeks. I've been watching how many innocent people over somebody's nonsense. How many innocent people are in jail because of a lie? Y'all didn't hear what I just said. Innocent people in jail because of somebody else's lie, prank, joke, influence. And so those dreams become dreams that say, God, if you have to use somebody, you can use me. You can be good by yourself. That's what we've learned. But you can't be great by yourself. We need each other. We, we need each other. And that's why God put us together here in a place we call church. There used to be a time when we didn't like church because it was a place that represented discipline for us. It represented structure. It represented getting things right. It represented people who were trying to live for God. And I'm not saying that everybody in church had a successful time doing that. We struggled with that. And as soon as we grew up, we said, we're not going back to church. And then there were others that God had a call on our lives. Every time we tried to stray from church, he led us right back to it. We, we were trying to love God so much that we found other things that tried to mimic our love for God, and it just didn't work. We've been studying and talking a lot in this church over the last mm, month we've been on a series and the series was it happened at church it happened at church that's what we've been talking about and uh, over 30 years of pastoring I've never been on a series before and a series of sermons is like where you're on the same scripture you're on the same few scriptures and God is just constantly breaking it down I wish I could tell you when this will be over. But obviously God is still reaching people because a lot of you are still responding. Because there are some people, in spite of what everybody else says about church on a negative level, there are some of you that are still here being able to witness to say, I don't care what anybody else says, I know I got my freedom at church. I know I got my structure at church. I know I got all of my mannerisms at church. I know there are some things that happened and love lifted me at church. Oh, 
I'm a great singer, I'm a great athlete, I'm a great actor, I'm a great professional, I'm a great engineer. But in order for me to learn all those things that teach me daily how to stay with it, I learned it at church. I don't just have a good memory. I learned the books of the Bible at church. We're way before there was um, Sugar Hill Gang. I learned nursery rhymes at church. I didn't just learn hotel, motel, holiday, and say what? I didn't just... I didn't just learn that. I learned Jesus loved me this I know for the Bible tells me so. I learned that stuff at church. I learned how to pray at church. I'm talking somebody else's story. You know what and who you are. And if you're able to listen right now online, wherever you are, you learn the importance of getting a word from God. You learn that faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word of God. So in spite of whatever's going on with you right now, you've at least made some time to say, wait a minute. I'm super busy. I'm super important. My children have things to do. All these activities are going on on Sundays now, and I don't have, but wherever you are, you're sitting there listening right now because you learn the importance of things happening at church. I want to address before we get to the scripture, though, that I think we need to kind of watch our conversations because now those of us who learned at church, we learned a word called faith, and we learned that faith cometh by hearing, and we learned that faith cometh by hearing the word of God, so we also learned that we shall have whatsoever we say. So sometimes we put words out there that uh, kind of go unnoticed, we think, but they create a lot of doom in our lives. You're not sick. You just said you were, and so you're feeling what you said, because if you shall have what you say, the enemy is constantly telling us now to say different things we talk about our experiences as if our faith is fading away and I believe sometimes our faith may get weakened because we are not connected always to the faucet which has been the word of God because we've been disconnected and let's just tell the truth about it even though we've had an opportunity to watch it online and even though we've had a chance to be connected if the wi-fi is failing or something else it 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 hampers us children education um is that a Failures in high schools are at an all-time high because children have it online. But it doesn't always reach certain communities. And a child is not always uh, able to function um, in an environment without a teacher. I remember growing up in school, one of my problems was I don't, I, I, I don't know if I was ADHD or what alphabet came along with me. But I needed a teacher in the room. I needed a teacher in the room. I needed someone to do that. I didn't do very, very good always. <clears throat> so I was the kid, I was the kid that eventually I went to school and all that stuff. And, but I was the kid that had to have it said a lot. I had to have it said a lot. And I had to, I had to have a picture painted to me. And I was the kid after it was over with. Everybody thought, oh, he's so smart. He's so, he's smart. He's smart. I wasn't smart. What I was, was I was inquisitive. I always would ask more questions. So if you told me something was blue, I'd say, what is blue? <laughs> you know blue, blue, like that, it's blue. So what is blue? Well, blue is a color. Where do they come from? <clears throat> so I would ask a lot of questions. And because I would ask a lot of questions, I would get more answers than the average person. So when I started to explain stuff, sometimes with me, one of my faults has always been, I think it's a fault, some people say it's an asset, has always been sometimes over-explaining something. So if somebody said Jesus died, I want to know why did he die? And why did he choose to do that? And, and what made him so special that he had to die? And, you know, all of those kids. So I would ask a lot of questions. And when you sit under the word of God this morning, I know that we have questions. And the Lord has been able to give us an opportunity to break the word down so that we can make sure the word is clear. I'm going to show you two things that we have been using as models during this lesson so I can get through and get into the message for today. One model is this. We call this a charcoal. Okay, all of you that have been here with us, you know what this is. This is a charcoal. The charcoal represents heat. It holds heat. If you hold on to it, once it's fired up, it will burn you. It will burn you. It will leave a bad mark on you. It will leave you scarred. There are people sitting right next to you right now that have scars. And sometimes those scars are there only for them. They don't feel it. But you ask, how would you get that scar? And it takes them back to a place. I say that again. There are things, there are scars that have happened, and then sometimes it takes them back to a place. Sometimes people have scars that they don't want to talk about. But something happened, and it left a scar. Sometimes that charcoal can get so hot that you can't get near it. And by itself, you will think that is dangerous. That represents a lot of people. 
who are in this room right now who are listening online, you say, I'm fine. I don't have to really ever be at church. I'm, I'm good. I'm here. And I'm not going to argue that you're not hot. I'm not going to argue that you're not the bomb. I'm not going to argue that you can't touch this. Doom, 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 doom. See, I'm not going to. It's a tough crowd. I'm not going to argue all of that. I'm not going to say that you're not this. You are. You are everything you say. And the, key, the thing is, you're good and you're hot. But it may seem like in your life you just can't keep it going because you're trying to be hot all by yourself. And you were not designed to be hot by yourself. I'm going to ask you, if you can, to focus 100% of your attention here as we start to now go here. I, I, I'll give you scriptures to look at in a minute, but, but you're not designed. So what the Lord had in mind is for us to, to be hot, but what he wants to do is to create a place and a fellowship for us so that while we're hot, we can all come together and see, that's one of these, but this is a bag of these, remember? That's the model we're using here now. That's the model we're using. That's the charcoal. So you're good at just heating up maybe a marshmallow. You can do this for a while. But after a while, as good as you are, as talented as you are, as brilliant as you are, as handsome as you are, as beautiful as you are, as uh, strong as you are, you're going to fizz out. And so when you fizz out, then you'll start saying things like, I don't think God hears my prayers. I don't think God loves me. I don't think God cares. Can I tell you why? Because you are hot, but separated by yourself, you will go out. And so God has given us a place called church where he says, okay, where you, you're over here. And the problem is not that I don't love you. The problem is not that you're not important. The problem is you're trying to do this without the help that I'm giving you. I've given you help. And, and the enemy says that you don't have to have church. You don't have to do this. And that's because he understands that if you ever and when you do get back in, you're going to get more fire. And together, all of you can conquer a lot of things. I have to keep saying this, and I'm going to keep saying this until every one of us here can explain because people are constantly telling you, you don't need church. You don't need to go to church. I, I never knew growing up, you know, I, I just, I, it, this is a time. I don't even, I can't find the words right now, so please forgive me if I don't have the right. I can't find the words about the rebellion and the rejection, but I understand that the enemy knows that you, without your fire, you're just a little black coal. And there are some things that God wants you to do. He wants you to accomplish. And so the enemy says, well, I've done a very good job of making sure you think that your mama and your daddy and all of them. But no, they need the same thing that you need. And that's a fellowship with God. I said earlier that somebody said to me before, you know, I don't want to go to church anymore because the preacher, they try to make things too churchy. I think they may mean religious. And I will explain that perhaps in the message this morning. But I don't, I mean, I don't know what that means to churchy. Um, and I explained it this way. I went the, the other day to look for some barbecue. And I went to this place that had a barbecue sign. And it had a, bar it had a, a pig on it. And it had wood, you know, everything that looks like. And, 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 I, and I passed by it. And I, and I didn't go in it, by the way. Because it just didn't smell barbecue-y enough. Now, I don't know what else they serve, but you're going you're gonna to attract me. If you're going to attract me that that's some good barbecue, I need, to, I need to smell it. I need to smell it in the clothes shop down the street. I, I don't want to have to put my head all the way in and go and bend over in the grill and go, that's it. I need to smell. I'm talking about where I'm from. I'm from. It, you know, it, it, <laughs> Chicago, you know what I'm saying. It got to be some, it got to be barbecue -y. So church to me, when I get in the atmosphere, I got to know I'm not in a club. I'm not in a social group. I'm not in a dance. I'm not, I'm somewhere that the power of God's going to come through and lives are going to be changed. I can tell it from the outside. Let them call you churchy. It's better than them calling you hellish. So we've been talking this story. This is where we are in our series, a story that happens in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And it's a story of a man that was crippled. So today, I want to walk through, get us on track, and see if we can't thank God for where we are this morning. I want you to look at somebody. Don't say anything. Just look at them. Give them that look like I'm so thankful to see you. 
Don't say a word. Don't look. At him. Don't say. Just look at him. Give him that look. Ooh. Those eyes. Go on, go on. You put that mascara on, that eye shadow, because you knew that's all you were going to show today. Show it off. Just look at him. Look, if you don't have nothing but lotion on your forehead or something, you know, give that look like I'm so thankful to see you. Sister Fight, your mama sitting next to you. Do me a favor, Sister Fight. Move your robe and move your purse for just a second. Amen. I don't mean to be embarrassing. And y'all may not be talking, but I want you to sit next to your mama for me. All right. All right. I just want you to do that. She can get vaccinated and then y'all can ride home together. So, Because if my mama was here, boy, I'd be sitting. Boy, let me tell you. And, and, and don't, don't y'all remember? See, this is, this is, this, 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 this is you. 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 This is you without your mama. You, you way out there. But what your mama say, when you get down on your heels, when you get divorced, when you get left, when you get fired, isn't it your mama that say, baby, you can always what? You can always what? Come back home. That's church. That's church. That's church. When you get out of jail, you can come back. But I'm going to tell you something today. God's about to say that if you stay in the fire, I'm about to cancel your jail appointment. Some of you, the world has given an appointment that you're not going to show up for. But, but I mean, so, 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 the scripture today in Hebrews, the 10th chapter, 35th verse says, and I'm going to talk to somebody seasoned for a minute. Now, y'all may hear us holler. We, we just do that. It don't sound right with a mask on. It, it sounds like pain with a mask on. But we, we have come through some stuff. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be, it will be. That sounds like a promise. I didn't get to that. <laughs> Your confidence will be. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get to the sermon. This is, see, I told you, I told you I was H, H, whatever those letters are. Uh, but see, right here, I just, that's when I started asking God, God, show me something that people don't see. Let me ask something that folk are afraid to ask you. And then I want you to say it to me, God. And I promise you that I'll speak what you would have me to say. So I'm just looking at this now. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't do this this morning. But your confidence will be. That sounds like the P word to me. That sounds like a promise. And I'm not, I'm, <laughs> I'm not even talking about that yet. But this sounds like Chicago. Isn't that a promise? That sounds like a promise. But, but, but in order for you to get the promise, let's back up. Let's back up. God say, don't you throw it away. If you're lacking faith, it's confidence. You got away from the pack, maybe. That's you. I don't know what happened. I don't feel it like I used to. You, you, maybe you threw it away. You used to be confident that when you prayed, something was going to happen. I'm trying to get to the sermon, y'all. I really am. You just knew if I say it, it shall be so. But, but now some things have gone wrong and you haven't seen it. So now you're afraid to say it. I declare this morning, you ought to say by his stripes, I'm healed. I declare right now, you say, I'm getting out of debt. I declare right now, I'm not going to jail. I declare right now, God's going to bless everything I touch. Are you afraid to say it? What happened to your confidence? I'm not, I'm not at this. This is when God just interrupts the game plan. I got the notes. He just interrupted. Somebody needed to hear God say that this morning. 
One is the confidence, man. Confidence is external. There are people that will speak into your life that will cancel your goals. They'll cancel your dreams. They'll cancel your hope. Why? Because you listen to them too long. Confidence is external. I know you're going to tell me it's internal. No, it's external. If you see a guy walking on a tightrope, he's confident because he knows that there's a net that can catch him if he falls. Some of you don't know that you got a net in your life. If you see it, you say, oh, I'm going to walk for it because there's no way I can mess it up because I have a net. And faith makes you get up there and take that walk because God says, even though you can't see me, baby. Oh, I'm t- I'm afraid. I'm not going to make it. I'm going to have to this. And this is going to go bad. You know why it's going to go bad? Because you said it. Oh, okay. I'm going to try to read through this. I'm going to do the sermon like a preacher supposed to and give the subject. So the people of God can go get in the rain. So he says, do not throw away your confidence. It will be. That's so good to me. It will be. He's talking to me. Okay. B- bottom line. Y'all just now sitting in on a Pastor Rush and God conversation. It will be richly reward. When you come out of this, you won't be broke, by the way. No, you're not going to be lacking anything. It ain't got nothing to do with money, dollars, and cents. God said, I'm going to reward you in a way that you would not. It's going to be pressed down, shaken together. It's going to be beyond what you can imagine or think. It doesn't look good, but when I get through, this is what, this is the promise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Lord, I thank you. But Larry, this is what he told me I have to do. In order for me to get this reward that's richly, he said, I need to persevere. I got to hold out. Did I say that too loud, y'all? I need to hold out. The enemy is trying his best to wear you down. But he said, you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will, there's that promise, you will, there's that promise, you will receive what he has promised. Why did I receive it? Because I persevered. I withstood it. I withstood it. Wasn't nobody at my celebration. Everybody was gone. Wasn't nobody for me. Kim didn't have a party with Everybody was gone. But I still get a party on behalf of God because I persevered. I stood the test. I went through it. I got the aches and pains for it. My nerves have been shot. My pressure has been up. My hair has turned gray. My feet and back are aching. But through it all, I persevered. Now, that's somebody's sermon. God bless you for tuning in. Go to Give Lify, Give an Offering. We got to have church now. I'm looking at some people who are sitting here this morning. They ain't concerned about what time it is. Tell somebody, I persevered. I need at least three people to stand on your feet and shout out, I persevered. No, come on, tell them, I persevered. I made it, I made it. You saw mama die. You saw grandmother die. You saw best friend die, but you have persevered. I just need three of you. Ain't nobody got the praise for you. I don't need to have no neighbor talk to you. This is you and God. He said, I want to show you yourself before you miss one more Sunday. Stop telling that lie. I went to God. I talked to the governor. I talked to a therapist. I talked. Oh, that was good. I went to. No, I persevered. My fire ran out. My fire ran out. My fire ran out. But I went to church and the church was still on fire. And I got in that fire. Yes, I did. And I got a promise waiting on me. It's all right. To tell God I'm scared right now. 
I'm a little nervous right now. I'm a little concerned right now. But if you'll just let me in, if you'll just open the door, if you'll just walk with me, I will. I'm gonna make it. 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 And when I come out of this, I won't look the same. When I come out of this, I won't walk the same. When I come out of this, I won't sing the same. I'm trying to get to the subject. Now y'all sit down, you, 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 sit down, thank you, sit. I don't like to tell folks to sit down, but y'all got to get to this. Somebody sit here and go, when are you going to preach? I'm, I don't know. I don't know. But so, so, so now, let's, <laughs> I got on a plane the other day and the pilot told me it's gonna take about two hours to get to my destination. But before I get on into those two hours, I had to have that little bus thing to just push me back away. I wanna speak to you this morning, you gonna make it. You gonna make it. But before you take off, some gonna have to push you back. You got to get away from the tech. You got to get away from the terminal. You got to get away from some things. That's the promise. Okay, 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 y'all. Hold up for a minute, huh? Some folk don't understand why are we making so much noise. Because over a year ago, God told us, get ready. It's going to be a revival. But before I bless you, the enemy's going to come in. He's going to move people. He's going to steal. He's going to kill. He's going to destroy. But if you just hold out, if you just hold out, God said, I will open some more doors. I will clear a path. I will make a way where there seems to be no way. But before the promise, you're going to go through some trouble times now. Anybody know trouble? Anybody know trouble? Anybody no trouble? God said you're going to make it, you're going to make it, you're going to make it, you're going to be richly rewarded, you're going to be richly rewarded as a promise, but before that comes, you're going to have to persevere. Don't give up, don't quit, don't give up, don't quit, don't give up, don't quit, don't give up, don't quit. Don't give up, don't quit, don't give up, don't quit, don't give up, don't quit, don't turn around, don't turn around, keep on going, don't quit. Young man, don't quit. Young woman, don't quit. I think the Holy Ghost being kind of rude right now. We haven't even got to the subject. But there's fire inside this house. Anything the devil wants to do to you, God said it's got to come through me first. And if it's not going to bless you, I'm not going to let it happen. Uh, listen. Listen. I told God, one day, a few months ago, God, 
I'm done. I'm done. I'm too hurt. God, I'm done. I can't, I can't go, I can't go through this. This is nonsense. This doesn't make sense. God, I can't do this. And God said, I don't want you to ever do any of it. I want you to let me do it through you. I don't know how many of you ever had something that God wanted you to do and you start backing up and say, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. And I backed up as far as I could back up. God said, now stand right there. And I wasn't strong enough. I wasn't strong like I thought I was, musicians. I wasn't strong. And then he said, here's your word, Ricky. Let the weak say, I'm strong. But you got to have confidence that I heard you say that you're weak. Now, now let me, okay, musician, I'm going to come get y'all in just a minute. I think I'm going to come back. But I got to talk to somebody right quick. Okay, hit the off button for a minute. Yeah. Oh, because you know we just when we hear that everything having breath, praise God. We just we can't. Okay, hold on for a minute. Cause somebody in here, stop saying you're sick. I mean, you stop it today. Stop saying you're sick. Stop saying I'm not looking at you. I'm looking straight down. I'm not looking because I don't want anybody to feel condemned that people's picking on. But stop saying you're sick. The reason it's rough is because you keep saying it. Change your words, and you're going to change your direction. Stop saying it. Go to your doctor this week. Fill all your appointments. Let the doctor show you that what he saw is not what he sees now. And stop saying they missed it. They didn't miss it. God fixed it. Because you were suffering with it by yourself on the outside. You were trying to deal with it. It was real. Now, no, 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 it wasn't a lie. It was always real. But you were trying to handle it over here. God says some of what you're going through now, baby, you can't have, You got to get that back in the fire. You got to get. So this is, this is what the sermon was about. Okay, the, the next verse now is going to talk to us about what the message was about. Just real quick, and I'm going to try to. I know it's so selfish to just take off and act like, but y'all in the fire now. You have to, next Sunday, you come on, get in this. Okay, so, so here's the story. The man went to church, and this is what we've been talking about in this series. He went to church, and I don't know, if I, I don't know how long I could last on this. I don't know how long I'm going to last on this, so if you can hear fast, hear fast. The man went to church, and the man had a problem. We all know it. We can all say it together now. We've been talking about it so long. so long. He had a weak hand. And what we've learned is that he wasn't born with this. Something happened, and he got like this. <laughs> I want you to look at somebody. Just look at him. Don't say nothing. Look at him like something happened, and I got like this. Don't say nothing to him. Don't say nothing to him. Don't, don't. Just look at him like that because some folk are trying to figure out, what's, what's your deal? Something happened. And, and when something happened with this man, he ended up being crippled. Now, in Mark, the third chapter, the first verse, it said, So he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there that had a withered hand. The reason I'm talking about this again this morning, and the reason the Lord has us on it, is because where did Jesus go? He went in the, in the barbecue bag. And if Jesus got to go to the bag, you mean you're going to tell folks, I don't have to go in the bag. So he went into the grill. He went to the barbecue bag. He went there. And a man was already there that had a withered hand. And so now they watched him, whether he was going to heal him on the Sabbath day, not so that they could bless him. The only reason they watched him was so that they could accuse him. 
Now, 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 this man had a withered hand. He knew folks stared at him. And I'm about to get to the subject now. We're going to get out of here. I know that you don't usually get the subject last, but I just, I don't know what that was God just did. I don't know what that, I won't try to explain it. And, and so the man walks in, he, he knows something is wrong with him. And so he walks in Chicago, and I don't know if you've ever walked into a place where folk look at you because you're different. You, you ever been around people like that? When you're popular, they say, that's him. When you're a celebrity, they say, that's him. When your name is good, they say, that's him. And it make you feel kind of important when everybody is hollering, that's him. Or they whispered, that's him. But, 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 but something happened to this man. And now, we don't know if he was a member of the church. We don't know if he was a deacon. We don't know if he was a politician. But now he's going out in public and he's embarrassed to go because people are saying what? Same words. Somebody in this room, don't be surprised if your that's him don't change. All right, we, we, we love it when it's good. We love it when it's popular. We love it when the right people are saying it. We love it when it makes us famous. But at some point, that's him. And you didn't write this. It was written way before you went through your that's him. Your that's him is there by your accusers. Accusers mean you didn't do anything wrong. But they said you did. And this man needs help. And only one person can help him. And he went to get help in that bag. Because that's where Jesus is going to the church, to the bag. Now, y'all know Jesus healed people away from the bag. He healed folk on the street. He sped on the ground one day, told a blind man, wipe your eyes in that. Now, just imagine if he put the vaccine in some spit. Some of y'all would never get that shot. Now, I, want, I don't want this corona, but I ain't wiping. I ain't putting no spit on my arm now. It's amazing. Sometimes the way the Lord's going to work with us, we don't want that to happen like that. To all of you who are ever in your life trying to help someone, you better understand that sometimes God will make a provision and make a way. Let's say there is something foul about the vaccination and all that stuff. Let's say something is foul. You ought to understand that the faith that God has placed inside of you can straighten up any foul thing. And don't you ever dare call yourself a responder and you want folk to trust you, but you don't trust what God's trying to do through you. What one of your prayers did God not answer? So they watched him that they might accuse him. And the subject today is really this. I'm going to church anyway. I'm going to church anyway. I got these issues. I got this messed up hand. I have folk watching me. But I'm going anyway. You, you sitting right there. Let's just say, let's just tell your story for a minute. I'm, I'm embarrassed. I, I'm, I'm shamed. I'm, I'm older. I've, I've, been, I've been through some things. But can you just, with me, with your mask on your face, say, say, I'm here anyway. You don't know my story. You don't know my pain. My dress doesn't match. My hair is not mine. My suit's too tight. I'm having problems with my identity, but I'm here. Anyway, I lost three children. I just come out of court, but I'm here. Anyway, why am I here? Because I heard that if I just don't throw my confidence away, <laughs> everything that I'm going through, I got a promise at the end of it. And I just want to bless somebody before we leave out of here this morning. 
You don't even have to wait to the end to get your promise. God has some rewards for you just in the process. There are some things that God is doing right now just because you have been faithful enough to say, God, I don't care if nobody else is in the bag. I'm going in. I know you've been lonely, God says. I know you've been hurt. I know you've been by yourself. I know you've watched other people get blessed. I know that that sickness that they told you about doesn't seem to be improving and the children are going crazy and they're leaving home. But I want you to know I hear you. And I know sometimes you're going to try to do so much and then you're going to hear those voices. There's going to be a voice that's going to come to you and the voice is going to say, it's never going to change. God told me to tell you today, don't believe that lie. You've been called a whole lot of things, but somebody's going to call you blessed real soon. There are some people that wish that they could be who you are, but they're not willing to pay the price that you paid. Yeah, they're jealous of you. Yeah, they want to be like you, but they don't know what you do when they're, they have no idea of what your knees look like. They have no idea what the stripes on your back look like. Don't throw away your confidence. You're not going to just be rewarded, but the Bible says you're going to be richly rewarded. It's one thing to come away with a blessing, but it's another thing to come away with that thing so big. Now, that your blessing's about to make somebody a little uptight with you. And when God gets through blessing you, somebody's going to say you're, you're phony and you're not real. Now, my question to you is, are you ready and can you handle the next level of blessings that God has in your life? When things happen, they sometimes are not fair, y'all. Sometimes they're just not fair. Things you just don't understand. You got to trust God that he's still in control. I don't know about you, but sometimes I've got mad at God. And I say, God, if I wasn't doing the work you told me to do, I wouldn't be going through this. See, I can talk to God like that because I got to get real with him sometimes. Somebody wrote a song and said, precious Lord, just take my hand. Lead me on. Let me stand. I am tired. I am weak and I am worn. But... I'm going to church anyway. Somebody said I'm going as soon as things get better. You better lift your voice and say, I'm going. If I don't praise him in this ditch, I'll never get out. Your ditch has a PA system in it and nobody recognizes your voice but God. Before the devil takes a breath away from you, if I were you, I would use what's left and say, God, have mercy on me. So he walks in that church. He knows they're going to look at him funny. I don't care who you are. I know this man. I know this man. I know this man. I didn't know this man like I knew this man in the last, like I've known him in the last three or four weeks, but I know this man. I know what it's like to walk and say, God, I don't want to show my face. No, I got to tell my story now. You've told yours. I know, God, what it's like to go public with you, God, and know that the enemy has 
come up with a diabolical, wonderful plan. But that man said, in spite of whatever the enemy is trying to do, I'm going to church. I'm going to have to have you to help me here for a minute. I'm, I'm trying to pull it together. God told me to tell you this morning that, yeah, Satan's going to say some stuff. Don't believe that lie. Because God had the solution way before you had the problem. <clears throat> On your way from Chicago to Dallas, they didn't build the landing strip when y'all got on the plane. Dallas was ready before you left the Windy City. Can I get a witness here? Your answer was ready before you walked into your problem, whatever it is. But what's going to land you is the confidence that you have while going through it. So if you can ask God for anything right now, say, God, just give me some confidence. God said, I gave you the faith. But God, give me some confidence. Can anybody say that with me? Say, Lord, give me confidence. And so now with this confidence, he's saying to you, don't, 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 don't throw it away. So we kept talking about this man, and we keep talking about this man, and we keep talking about this man. And this man walked right up in that church knowing that something was wrong with him. You ever came to church knowing something was wrong with you? He had a weak right hand. Had a strong left hand, but he couldn't use it. It was awkward. But just like you, he walked up in there anyway. And I got to keep telling you this story so it becomes like almost your favorite Bible story. Because when you invite somebody to church, they're going to start talking to you about all these things they're going through. And you got to talk to them and say, you got to go anyway. <laughs> because that thing ain't going to get any stronger with you out here by yourself. You got to come get in that firebox. You got to come. And sit in church. Now, this story is incredible because this man never asked for healing. He just went to hear the word. And everywhere he went, folk were looking at him. See, like everywhere I'm walking right now, y'all just looking at me. I'm with, even if I say, don't look at me, I can't say it because you're just looking at me. Because it's kind of odd for me to be out here. And I'm just walking it out. And you're going to meet some people, and they're going to come to church, and then I'm going to know where to sit. Okay, where's the short dress section? Where's the, where the smoking section? Where the just got off weed section? Where the, where the need some weed section? Where the divorce section? Y'all don't have no section in y'all church for me. I'm having trouble with my identity as a woman, as a man. I don't know what to do. I want to go, but y'all don't have a place for me. That's how that man felt. Because let me tell you why he felt like that. Because when he went in there, man, see what happened is his, something happened to his right hand. And in the biblical times when something would happen to your right hand, you would only use your left hand to clean your body parts. Okay? So your left hand was automatically filthy. So you would never use your left hand. You always use your right hand. But now his right hand is damaged. And so all he's going to church with is what? Oh, you can go ahead and say it, F word, the filthy hand. Now what if you, all you had to bring God was something filthy today? You didn't get to clean it up. No, so you come to church looking for the clean section. And it's not one when you sit down. And so what you do now is look and try to find out who's cleaner than you. It doesn't matter because they came to church anyway and which which now his hand is damaged and so I want everybody right now in church with me clap but don't use your right hand now God don't say praise me I can lift your left hand but don't you can't lift that stinking hand not in church 
See, that's the rule. So you see, the enemy was very cool at taking away that right hand. Satan knows exactly what to steal to make you stay away from church. Of all the places you can go, don't you go with your filthy, you old hypocritical dog. You don't go in church with your filth. I need to hear from Jesus. Jesus is going to speak at the church. I used to be real big in church because we don't know anything about this man's history. We don't know if he had three children. We don't have had grandchildren. We don't know anything about him. All we know is that he's got a weak hand and a filthy hand. Is this blessing anybody yet? No, I'm telling you this, y'all, because as we start coming back into church, you're going to hear all kinds of excuses for people not wanting to come back. And I'm going to tell you right now, no excuse is a good one. Not one single excuse. So he comes in. And, and I'm just going to say, I'm going to just sit in this section with you because this is the section. Now, guess what happens when I sit here? Everybody around me is associated with my field. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can go over here. I can go over here and sit right here. And somebody's going to say, oh, so they must be like that. You see, the problem is not that you just have a weakness. Wherever you sit, folk can be associated with you. So, so here's what I need y'all to do. When I come to sit here, I need y'all to clear out. So I'm trying to find a place. So I think I found one, right? This lady, these ladies look nice. So I'm getting ready to sit here. And all of a sudden, as I get ready to sit down, because they, they look like they had on their nice choir robes. And they... Jesus. See, that's what it looks like when the enemy's getting ready to set you up. You start in your mind knowing everybody knows everything and, and they just happen to be leaving early. But when the enemy starts working on your mind, he'll tell you that nobody loves you. Nobody's there for you. Everywhere you go, people are tripping. And in reality, they had stinky left hands too. Because everybody in the church has a stinky left hand. Y'all don't get this. Because you couldn't ever use your right hand. You only use your left hand to take care of your body parts. I didn't say stinky leg, did I? I didn't say that. I said stinky. All right, y'all come on back. When he leaves, they come back. Help me wrap this message up because I'm not going to get... To the point now, another point, but I got to get to this one. God has the solution before you ever had the problem. And so what he's saying to you this morning is, I just want you to bring it to me. We, we, we got to find a way now to let people know that God still loves us. We got to be able to say to him, God, you promised me darkness. Freedom from the darkness. You promised me that a light was going burst, to burst forth and burst open in my life. Anybody here ever had a, a promise that you wanted God to help you with? Anybody ever lost confidence before? Anybody here ever been like really sad before? Then what are you doing here this morning? Somewhere in your life, God said, don't worry about it. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to strengthen you. And while you're being strengthened, nobody will know you're being strengthened. And while I'm strengthening you, I'm going to open some doors. Y'all look out now. Because when you get strong enough, now you're going to be able to go through some doors. Now, I just need two people in here that's ever had a door open, let me see your hand. Just two people. That's one of the, okay, wait, 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 we got an overflow in here. God has opened some doors for you. 
Now, now, since he's opened some doors for you, isn't it, isn't it, isn't it possible that if God did it before, that God can do it again? I said, if he did it before, can God do it again? Now, here's my question for you. Are you ready to go through a little more hell? <laughs> the devil is not going to sit by and watch you get richly blessed. He's coming to kill, steal, and destroy. For a long time, I saw this weakness that this man had as a curse. But look at it for just a minute. The attack that's been on your life is no longer going to weaken you because this morning you about to change your structure. I said this morning you about to change your life. I said this morning you about to change your direction. This morning you about to speak some things into existence. I said this morning something's about to change now. Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm feeling this this morning. I want, you, I, want, I, want, I want somebody right now to just say with me, Devil, you started it, but it won't finish. You started it, but it won't finish. You started it, but it won't finish. What you meant for evil, God's about to turn this thing around. But I want you to be strong. I want you to stay strong until God turns it around. I want you to stay strong. He's about to turn this thing around. Now, let me, I need you to help me with this for a minute. I want you to take whatever hand you have. Take that right hand you have. The one that God's given you strength. I want you to reach it towards somebody. You don't have to touch them, but I want you to reach it towards somebody else. And I need you to speak these words. Say, God. No, come on, let him hear you now. Somebody needs your help this morning. They came to church. You say, God is going to turn that thing around. That tumor will not grow. That debt will not grow. The wedge between you and your children, it will not grow. That firing that they're about to do to you, it will not grow. God's getting ready to call your name. Now this next thing here is going to be for praisers only. If you're a praiser or a worshiper, I'm going to talk to you for a minute. I'm not talking to anybody else. If you praise the Lord, I want you to get out of your seat for just a minute and I want you to take a turn. I want you to just take a turn. You're not trying to show off, but you got to shake some things loose. You got to shake some people loose. You got to shake some things off. You got to get some confidence. You might look crazy, but God's about to do something in your life. That's just for the worshiper. That's just for the worshiper. That's just for the worshiper. Anybody blessed? I say, is anybody blessed? Take that hand. Throw your blessing. Say, take that devil. You're going to transfer your power. You're going to bless somebody else now. You don't have to do life by yourself. I'm about to take this on in now. God wants me to tell you this morning, you don't have to do life by yourself. You were designed to be connected. You were designed to be connected. If you don't mind sharing the Holy Ghost, if you don't mind sharing with somebody else, I want you to take your hand, reach toward that person and say, we were designed, we were designed to be connected, say with me in the name of Jesus, I declare you are healed in the name of Jesus. I declare, I declare, I 
Circumstances are happening in your health right now. I don't know who I'm talking to. Somebody's finances are in trouble right now. Something you're going through is pushing you down. It's telling you that you'll never get better. You got too many obstacles. But I'm here to tell you this morning, you're surrounded by a forest of faith. You're surrounded by believers. You're surrounded in a bag. Well, we've been through trials, we've been through trouble. You tried to get out, you tried to make it on your own. But God said, get back in the bag, get back in the bag, get back to the church, get back to the church. Every time the devil sees you isolated, he thinks he's gonna get you, but get up. I need two people to get up and I need somebody to move like you got to leave it behind. I need you to get your jump back for a whole year. You lost your jump. If you get your jump, you're gonna shake that thing off. And when you shake it off, step out of it. It's done, it's done, it's done. (laughs) We picked up a lot of trash. We picked up a lot of foolishness. But it's time to shake that thing off. I almost gave up my duty. I almost gave up my pulpit. I almost gave up my life. I was sinking. I want you to turn to somebody and tell them right now, the devil ain't just dealing with you. No, go ahead and tell them, the devil ain't just dealing with you because we're connected. The devil ain't just fooling with you because we're connected. He's going to have to deal with all of us. He's going to have to deal with me too. Our roots are connected. Our praise is connected. We are planted in the house of God. We're planted in the house of God. He's not going to get your child. He's not going to take your job. He's not going to get your confidence because I'm connected to you. And every Sunday, I'm going to look for you. I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to run with you. I'm going to be here with you because God will take care of you. God will. I got a headache, but I'm going to church anyhow. My back is hurting, but I'm going to church anyway. My mama died, but I'm going to church anyway. My daddy died, but I'm going to church anyway. I don't have my vaccine, but I'm going to church anyway. They've been making fun of me, but I'm going to church anyway. My life has been messed up, but I'm going to church anyway. Satan's trying to kill your children. And you trying to make sure they make it to a softball game. Satan's trying to kill your children. And you trying to make sure they make it to a football game. Tell the coach that God said, my son, my daughter got to get his word first. I'd rather you miss a game than to mix next year. Oh, we love that our kids do, but there's a fight going on now. The enemy's trying to make us lose. You might feel like giving up. I don't know who you are, but we're gonna keep pushing forward. We're gonna push you. We're gonna push you. We're gonna push you. Because we're family. We're praying for you. We're speaking life into your destiny. That's the benefit of us being connected. Why am I going to church? Because there's a benefit. We got to stay connected. 
We got to stay connected. It's not just your prayers. It's all of our prayers. We may not know you by name, but we know your spirit. We all connected, y'all. We all connected. We all connected. If you can, I, 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 and God knows, God knows, I'm, I'm just being led by the Holy Spirit now. I need somebody. If you see a brother around you, if he's a father, go touch him. Just touch him on his shoulder. Just touch him on his shoulder. Touch him on his shoulder. Touch him on his shoulder. God's about to use you to bless somebody. Now touch him on his shoulder. If your father, if your boy in here, a young man, a man, and you got a son or daughter, raise your hand. You, I don't know if you stay with him. That ain't my business. Now if you're touching that person, I need you to say something after me right now. I want you to join me right now because we got to speak this now. Say, I cancel all the assignments that you have for this man's children. His sons, daughters will not be addicted. In Jesus' name, I cancel all the assignments that you have on this father's relationship with his children. You have confidence in your own words now. Yeah. That's it. Make it sound like a barbecue place in here. Let it smell it up. Yeah, your praise are offering a whole different fragrance in here now. And if you're at home, wherever you are, you put him in the atmosphere. Yeah, you put him in the atmosphere. Nobody has to tell you to clap and pray. You make that place smell like God is in there. God, it seems like it's taking so long. But I don't mind waiting now. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting for you. Don't mind waiting. If you're in this room right now and you want to give the Lord your life, let's just do something that used to be old fashioned, but it's what God says whosoever will, let him come. If you want the Lord to be in your life today, just walk down here. Come on. Come on. You came this far? Just say, Lord, today I want to join church. I can't go any further. Come on. Lord, I don't mind waiting. I, I, I'm going through so much trying to get it right, but I can't do it by myself. There's a young man. Is there another young man, another young woman? You've been waiting on this Sunday. We're going to wait because I know it's going to take you a minute. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you. Thank you. There's another young lady. Come on, somebody else. On you. Lord, I need you. Anybody else just need him? Just. Yes, I need you. Come on, anybody. Jesus. Jesus. Come on, this is your Sunday. Jesus. I know the devil's telling you, sit down, don't go down there. Tell him, no. Lord, I need no, I'm going today. I'm going today. This is my Sunday. Yes, yeah. Jesus. 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 I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. Oh, 
Oh, come on. If you wake up tomorrow and life is over, if you're not sure you'd be in heaven, come here right quick. Come on down right now. Don't you worry about trying to explain to anybody. Come on. Don't try to explain to anybody. They won't get it. I don't mind waiting on you. Come on. Anybody say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Come on. Yes, I need you. This is not the last day of your life, but you can start over right now. Jesus, Jesus. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. I've been trying to do it by myself, and it's just not working, Lord. Yes, I So I'm calling on your name, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. I just want you to enjoy yourself right now. Just you, just you and God. Say, God, I've been so busy. I don't even have time in the week to just give you a worship. Just say, Jesus, I've been waiting for you. And it gets to a point where you like that man, you say, I am desperate. I'm desperate. I'm desperate. Lord, I'm desperate. I'm desperate now. I'm desperate. I'm past the need. For you, God. For you. Jesus. Can somebody say, Lord, I'm desperate. I'm desperate. Yes, I am. I am desperate. I'm desperate for you. For you. Y'all come here for a minute. Come up down here. Yeah. Stay right there. I want you to open your mouths. Come on over here, baby. Yeah. Change looks different sometimes for different people. Now, there may be some of you that are online that said, I want to join today. All you do is go to join IBOC or two. 31996, join. I don't know what it is. It's on the screen. You'll see it. We've been praying for you. We've been trying to reset. I don't know how many hits you took last year. I don't know how many hits we took last year. But I do remember a couple of those hits knocked us down. And we looked up and realized, God, we're still living. Somebody in this room had learned to live from the bottom. And the ditch that they threw you in, God had a trampoline in that joker. You hit that ditch and you bounce right up. I want you all to repeat after me. And say, Lord, I'm here now. To receive you as my Savior. I can't do it alone. Forgive me, God, if I tried to act as if I could keep my own flame going. I'm giving you my life for the rest of my life. Satan, I changed my mind. I'm going with Jesus. I'm going with Jesus. I'm going with Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. And just like that, and just like that, and just like that, and just like that, do you know what, what amazed me? 
and, and y'all, we, we're going to all go together. Let's just chill, man. Oh, it's herring up. Lord have mercy. I didn't realize how serious Satan wanted to kill me. You know what I did realize, though? He can't. So what Satan will do is orchestrate something in your life to make you kill yourself. I said he'll make you kill yourself. You got to tell him, I ain't punking out like that. I'm going to live, and God's going to allow everybody who tried to destroy me to watch me bounce back. I'm going to live. I choose to live. And I have confidence that I'm going to be richly blessed. So we're going to accept you all as members here at IBOC. And there are the appropriate people that will come and get information from you. Now, y'all got some people who need God. That right hand, let me see it. I'm going to start talking about this again tomorrow night. Okay? I'm going to start talking about it some more. We're not done. The man lost his right hand. That must mean something. We still don't know what that, that right hand represents. We know it represents strength. We know this left hand. And I'm not saying left-handed people are dirty. I'm not saying that. Come on, no comments. But in the biblical times, that, see, that's all, a lot of those rules they set. All I'm saying is the scribes and Pharisees set some rules. They didn't know what they were talking about. They didn't know what they were talking about. They're just making up stuff because they're in charge. But that right hand did mean something. You need to find out what that right hand is about. You need to find out why that's the hand that is some of our dominant hand. And your left hand, for some of you, is your dominant hand. What does that strong hand mean? Okay. And we just got to learn now, y'all. Because it all happened for this man. It happened at church. Now, thank you. You got some friends. You can put it down. You got some friends that need to come to church, okay? Y'all just invite them. They'll come. They'll come. Sometimes they may say, well, I heard certain things about church and I heard certain things about that. Then tell them you got to hear the rest of it. What you heard before was what you heard a long time ago. There's another side of the story. There's something called the truth. Okay. Everything still should be in there, son. Thank you for being here. Um, you're going to have to learn how to forgive. Somebody asked me the other day, if I were you, I would I'd be doing something. Then I'm not going to represent Christ in it. I can't handle crisis like a Pisces. I can't handle crisis like a Pisces. Pisces is crazy. Pisces is kind of crazy, and I can't be crazy. I'm crazy. I'm gone. You got to handle it like a Christian, and I can't do it on my own strength because I'm not that strong. So I, have, I had to get it from the bag. Every one of you in this room, you are the reason that I'm still here. Your prayers, because the prayers of the righteous avail it much. I, I can pray, but it's all of your prayers. To those of you that were in the choir, this is your second last call. If God didn't tell you to walk away, Why did you walk away? No, you don't understand. Everything that's coming through you is going to come through how God provided before you start smelling yourself. How do you know he's a healer if you don't trust him with that stinky left hand? Those of you that ushered. That are still online. Those of you that were on hospitality, God never told you to walk away. Well, Pastor God, listen. He gave you a season. And he gave you a flourishing. Leaves fall. But the tree don't get uprooted. And if that's between you and God, that's you and God. But it's kind of funny. Trees don't shed because of what they heard. 
Satan put us in a dark place, then attacked us. Blessed be the man that walketh not in the counsel of Facebook. Standeth in the way of sinners or sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree. <laughs> Planted by the rivers of water. You got a lot of seasons of fruit coming. And whatever you do, it's going to prosper. And in the meantime, I'm going back to church. Thank you all. Welcome home. You may be seated. To the rest of us, those of you that are on line, if I were you, I would mind it and make it my business to rebuke every enemy and every demon that the enemy sends to keep me away from being at church. People are always asking us now, pray for the young people, pray for the young people. We are. Satan is telling our young people they don't need love. They don't need fellowship. They can make it on their own. And we know that's not the truth. Amen. So right now we're going to stop. Thank you, praise team. Thank you, choir, everybody. We're going to do our offering now. So this is where we all come together and you reach into your I don't know if you carry purses. I don't know what. I'm, I don't know. I'm behind. But this is where you used to write checks. Because God bless you with jobs. And we say, Lord, thank you. I will maintain my level of responsibility for the house of God. And sometimes we come in. We have good church. You raise your hand. You praise God. You want music sing. You want all this stuff. But when God looks at your account, he says, hey, wait a minute. You never loved me enough. You paid more for movies this month than you did. You paid more for Uber Eats than you are giving. And you got food in the house and folk delivering food to you. So, not to feel guilty or bad, but y'all, it's time. It's time. We have never asked you one time. I said to you, if you don't do this, the church is going to close and we're going to have to shut down some cameras. and shut. We don't operate like that. We don't speak that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to speak it out like this. That ain't happening. God has provided and God will always provide. Abundantly above more than we can ask or think. I'm just challenging you to get in on this move. Thank you, Iba. Amen. We got in there a little late, but we don't apologize for praising God as hard as we did today. That was some hard praise. We all need to get in the rain or something after this. All right, so we're going to bless our offering. To those of you online, I'm going to challenge you to go to Givelify. That's an app that we have. Do it right now. Go in and just give and thank God for us being here. We're, wait, we're waiting on you. We have made this place as safe as possible. We're constantly making it as safe as possible. We have provided a place right here in the church for you to get your vaccinations and people around you. Help us get this word out, please, please. And then we're going to have on July, well, June the 5th and 6th, we're going to do it here. We're going to have food. No, 5th and 6th is your opening shot. And 3rd and 4th is where you get your last shot. Now, that's when we're going to have some. We're going to fire these grills up around here. Yeah, we're going to, after church, we're going to walk out of here. And now, if it's raining, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll find, you know how we'll do it. We'll find someone. But we're going to have a celebration on July 4th because that's when we come out of our 90-day reset. Some of you all have never signed up for it. So what you can do right now on your text on your phone and go to 90 Day Reset, you can take that one also to 31996. It's 90 Day uh, Chicago. If y'all want to join us, it's called 90 Day, just the number 90, the word day, and the word reset, 90 Day Reset. And what that is is every day I'll, I'll give you a, a scripture or a prayer on your email, and I'll pray with you on your voicemail just about a minute every day at 9 o'clock in the morning, somewhere around there. And then sometimes I just call and leave an inspiring word. And we, for 90 days, well, we don't have, how many days do we have left now? 23? About 22 days? 42? Before July 4th? 
Okay, so about the next 40 days or something like that, you'll, you'll be in with us, okay? I'm, I'm inviting every one of you that have not done it. Do it on your phone right now. Just go 90 Day Reset. Send that to 31996. We'll get your information to you, and we're going to start giving you messages. Just come on. It's okay. You don't have to be a member of this church. And when you see me leaving a message, don't you hit uh, that red button. Come on, y'all hook a brother up. Come on, let's pray together. My goodness. All right? And it's just, I know it's a little long. Sometimes you have to say, but, but then go back and delete all of them. Take them out of your phone. Some of y'all have prayers left over from last year. They working. Get some, get some new prayers, okay? Clear it in your phone. Clear it out of your, so you can always have room for other messages. And thank you for being patient with us. We're trying here very hard. We're trying very hard. If we don't make it in time, somebody in your family dies or something, y'all, I promise you we're trying. We have teams there. Um, and we're, we're just trying to be there. And we're not letting this go. And it looks like to me you're healthy and strong. Thank you, man of God, for being where you are. All right. So we're going to bless our offering. After we bless our offering, we're going to sing. We're going to be in some music here. And those of you on the Internet, you're going to be released. And tomorrow night is uh, what we call Monday school. It starts at 7.05. Now, you want to hear what else is going on with this. Today, Holy Spirit just took over in a whole different way. I don't, I don't question him. Somebody had to have a, two or three different sermons in there. I don't know what that was about. Somebody got your message, though. But tomorrow, we stick right with this story. Okay? Tonight, there's an interesting service that we have here at 6 o'clock on Sundays. It's called Dream Church. Uh, any of you between, for real, for real, between 25, I think it's 25 and 35. What is it? What's that, what's that age limit? What's the age? There's no age. Between 20 and 40? Oh, I almost made it. But it's just, it's just a very contemporary kind of church. And, and I'm going to tell you something. This evening we're going to be talking about dream. Um, it's called... Um, Sunday fun day. So next Sunday we're going to be working on having a uh, dream church Sunday. Uh, it's a ice cream Sunday, ice cream social. That's what it is. So we're going to be working on that this evening while we're in our dream church. We talk about things like that because there is a time for millennials. I need some help. I need some help. Those of you online, help me with this. We have children in this church, and. This is one of the safest places in America. Yeah, I said out loud for children. And when the devil knows what you're doing with children, he'll try to do anything to mess that up. But we are just blessed and grateful. We need some of you to help us with our children. On Sundays, I'm kind of getting aware that a lot of people would want to come, but they just kind of want to make sure that the kids are in a different place, that they're able to be tended to and be safe. So those of you who have had experience with working with children, if you just let me know, let's go ahead now as we reset in July. Let's go ahead and open up some areas now for our young people. We have so much here to offer young people, and it is a blessing. It is a blessing. Amen. They're safe, they're secure, and they're loved 100%. All right. Father, we thank you for our offering today. Thank you for this wonderful service and the word that you gave us. Thank you, Lord, for that liquid sunshine outside. Our yards need the rain, cars need the rain, street need the rain. Thank you, Lord, for just washing some things away and blowing some freshness in. In the name of Jesus, every offering that's given, we thank you for it. A hundred percent in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. And good morning, good evening. And we'll see y'all tonight at 6 o'clock online and tomorrow at Monday School.